Welcome, welcome everyone, it's time for more Starfield. Where last time we picked up with the Crimson Fleet again. It has been a while, so that's why we're back with them. And uh, we have found ourselves here at SY920 AUC Space Station, basically. I think it's a place where they more or less do research and development. That is why we are going here for the Com Spike. We have been infiltrating this place in a kind of a weird way because <laughs> I first did find a um, a uh, uniform, so that's why I'm looking like this right now. And that uniform got me into some places, but then I kind of messed it up and then reverted back to being a little bit stealthy. Uh, the, th the thing that I messed up was that I was supposed to get a clearance code, and I had a choice of three. And uh, the uh, uniform that I picked up, I picked up as part of, you know, a character. And I think I understood what his name was, but I had to choose a code based on my last name. And uh, for some reason I didn't remember it, and I thought to myself, well, okay, what happens if I click the first choice? So I think it was like A to H or something. And the game said, yeah, here we go, here's a code. So I thought, yes, lovely, perfect, I chose the, wrong, the right one immediately. Then I got to the security station and they said, uh-uh, that's not the right one. So then I went back to the computer and would you believe it, I couldn't get another one. So kind of screwed myself over with that one. But I have been here, I've been uh, sort of in and out in this little place, get some information about where I need to be and where I need to be is Engineering Bay so I think what we are going to have to do is sort of just backtrack to begin with. So I'm up here on the uh, ventilation shafts or whatnot. And isn't that very common in this game? They do seem to like these. And I'm okay with that because uh, it kind of feels like they have at least thought a bit about the level design. That's very lovely. So we're supposed to go that way, but if I have the scanner i think the scanner will show me that i'm supposed to go here right well actually the game doesn't say anything about where <laughs> where i need to go so anyway uh i think am i in a place where i i am allowed to be or not because i might be slightly unsure if i am allowed to be here I think I am allowed to be here. Yeah, I'm allowed to be here. That's absolutely fine. Hello. Hello, people. Dr. I'm one of you. Has put in Don't a request worry. for oh. more personnel. It seems there was an oh. accident. Messina. It's always something with that doctor. Not to change the subject, but are we concerned about the potential leaks? No. Until you can provide more substantial proof, we'll simply monitor the situation at the cargo bay. For now, I've recommended to Dr. Vogel to contact me immediately if he identifies any suspicious behavior. Well, that's interesting to hear. Vogel is a person we we're supposed to sort of uh, chat with, I think, if I remember correctly, based on the information we found. Okay, so we are apparently about to... Alright. Am I allowed through here, then? Yes. I'm allowed through here. Lovely. So we are starting with an elevator ride. That's perfect. And you're in Bay 4. We're going there immediately, apparently. Good. All right, we are out. Optional is to talk to Juan. We can do that. Question is, again, am I allowed here? I hope so. <laughs> so let's see with Juan here. Are you here? Cargo's almost unloaded. We'll be departing shortly. Cool. I'm your cargo, though. Don't leave without me. You're not going anywhere without me. Okay, so... Hey, are you actually leaving? It's nothing you've done. You've managed to get to the entire station without raising a single alarm. But the longer I stick around, the more people ask questions. And that's before they find out what you've been up to. Uh-huh. Well, okay. I am your cargo, though, so please don't leave. You are. And I've delivered you just as the Gado asked. That being said, I can stay in orbit for a short while. I'll need to send word to Delgado anyway, if you don't get off that station. But it looks like you'll need to find your own way off the ship. That doesn't mean you're trapped. On a station this big, there are bound to be other vessels you can steal. As a member of the Crimson Fleet, I trust you can handle that. Well, this wasn't really part of the plan. I mean, yes, I am stealthy. I can make it off, but uh, okay. Any advice for me? Stay clear of any marines or try a scientist's outfit. You're more likely to be a stranger if you're wearing a lab coat. 
Other than that, the only advice I can give you is find the Dr. Vogel. Whenever I hear chatter about that project, that's the name that comes up. Find him and you'll find your target. Well, we kind of already knew that. So, okay, fair warning. Going to have to direct some heat your Ooh, I'm going to have to direct some heat your way. I could say that. Why would I do that, though? But, uh, yeah, okay, fine. I've made it this far. That's fine. I should probably be able to get uh, my ass out of here. You've made it this far without engaging in combat. I trust you have no issues moving further. It was an honor to work with a true professional. Good luck. If you manage to get the comm spike and make it out alive, next time you're at the Nova, I'll buy you a drink. Okay, I, bo I both like you and dislike you. <laughs> okay, so what is the game telling me now? Locate comm spike, nothing else, but... Uh, I was about to say that there are two uh, things. No, there's not two things, there's one. W one is on the compass. Now, you mentioned a lab coat. That seems like an... Uh, Seems like a good idea. Mr. Xenobiology. Cora don't want that, I don't think. We are looking for books for Cora. They're supposed to be like mechanical, technical stuff, so we'll be on the lookout for that. But alright. Am I. Again, am I in trouble by being here? Uh, S1920 science uh, outfit, or scientist outfit. Lovely. Dress up in that. So now I'm looking like this. Lovely. Okay. Hopefully no one will bother me now then. So what are we saying? It's down below, which means that going in here shouldn't necessarily be interesting. Are we sneaking or are we... I should not necessarily have to be sneaking now, right? Oh, 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 not what I wanted. <laughs> are you going to have a problem with me? You're an engineer. What's up? Excuse me? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. She doesn't really care. Good. Confirmation that that I am allowed to be here for now, at least. All right. Well, do we have? Are you I've on your way out? For more test pilots. Uh huh. So, do we have anything interesting in here? But we, yes, we do. Engineering lab computer. Bloody hell, a lot of stuff. Project Archangel. Supplementary proposal: hydrogen-based gravity technology for prototype ships. Funds uh, would most likely come from UC military defense prototyping budget, but potential civilian application could draw grants from interested corporate parties. And the bandwidth, this would likely be a protracted endeavor, but the potential rewards would far exceed the costs. Would be far more predictable than quantum travel, both from a technical and cost perspective. Well, that's lovely, I suppose. Now we have transfer of Archangel Pilot from Natara, who we saw up there. I'm requesting a transfer of the pilot Alex Vong, codename Archangel Azrael, over to the UC Vigilance due to the accident on the project that killed two of his peers. He's in no mental state to continue, and we will need a replacement pilot for both Project Archangel and Comspike. Until these new pilots are vetted, test flights will be divided up amongst the remaining ro roster of available testers. Leads will need to provide the pilots with a code to bypass the checkpoint. So, okay... Pilot, you say, and there was an engineer mentioning that they're looking for new pilots. So, okay, find a code to go by checkpoint, be a pilot. Interesting. So now, Gustav Ames, your project does indeed sound promising, Dr. Ram. Make your uh, instincts your compass, and they will always point to true north. Unfortunately, I cannot commit my time or heart to something new at the moment. Moreover, I feel my presence would only hurt your chances at in acquiring Mast's stamp of approval. The number of hurdles Project XNN encountered with procuring the specimens I required, both in terms of the hazardous terrain and the political nonsense that accompanies any deep space mission, as as well as Commander Wood's involvement in my projects makes them a third rail. As such, it is in your best interest to make your proposal free of the baggage that comes with my name. And there are some budget cuts from Notara. Once more, I'm sending a reminder to all departments that we are doing extensive budget cuts as part of the internal audit into Commander Wood's tenure here. Most existing projects will be followed, or sorry, not uh, allowed to continue, provided a realistic roadmap to completion has been submitted. Going forward, all new products will have much stricter requirements for approval. A checklist for meeting this criteria will be supplied as part of your weekly briefings. And then finally, Dr. Vogel from Erin. Erin Kang, Sandra, 
whoever that is. I'm not sure what to make of Dr. Vogel's request delivered on a paper napkin to turn his laboratory into a non-Euclidean space. He said you will know the details, but somehow I doubt that. As much as I love the Comspike project from an intellectual standpoint, I miss working with you and Dr. Ames. I'm hoping Project Cloud Strike can get greenlit and we can get the band back together. Should I just take this to Commander Natara? I've never met her before, but I feel like my concerns are valid. At times, Dr. Vogel doesn't seem like it's all there. All there. And yes, Sandra. Oh, no. And yes, Sandra, that there type was unintentional, but I'm keeping it. Okay, fine. You got me, game. So there's a bit more about Dr. Vogel. He doesn't seem to be all in it, if you know what I mean. Which is, uh, I mean, he's a scientist. That's sort of, sort of what they do, isn't it? Okay, we have some stuff in there, but nothing that we need to immediately think about storage crate we are not going to be unlocking stuff in here coffee mug but it looks boring oh. why did that drawer just come out <laughs> did you push that drawer from we your have side money for the security beef up okay, why are we from the then. all right well that room was a bit in okay so now we have a lock but i do see a computer could be interesting stuff on that computer, so all right, fine. Here we go, lovely. So, computer, so, and that's what's this oh. big project you're working on? Oh, well, I can tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. Really, couldn't you just trust me? Nope, right out the airlock, you'd go, but I'd try my best not to enjoy it. Okay, nothing more from that, but named person there. So let's see, are we with anything new? Oh, bloody hell. XNN was mentioned before. The question of whether alien life is intelligent is a difficult question to ponder without first asking what we mean by the word intelligence. Oh, not a lot of, rather, very unlike uh, other uh, of these project proposals. Not a lot of text on those, but here, a lot of text. <laughs> After all, there is often a human-centric bias when we attempt to classify one species as smarter than the other. For example, we tend to view plants as less intelligent than animals because they lack a central nervous system, when in fact mycorrhizal fungi have long developed sophisticated networks where plants transfer nutrients and minerals to each other without a centralized command center. How is that intelligent, though? That, that doesn't have anything to do with intelligence, as we colloquially speak about intelligence. It's just a matter of nature. So that's basically the same as saying that humans digest food. So I don't know exactly how how intelligent that is. Uh, or uh, rather, how it even is on the on the intelligent bar, so to speak. Anyway, we often hold the, the same view of machine intelligence versus biological alternatives. We rely on ship computer algorithms to dispense energy efficiently, the same way the brain directs our limbs. Yet in my study of xenofungal networks, which is XNN, I learned that there is a better way. Rather than centralize ship control, if a collective intelligence can be used to direct ship power, it could increase speed and efficiency by a factor of too. Okay, if you say so. Faster computation in milliseconds can be the difference between victory and defeat in battle. Ships now low on fuel reserves will be able to grab jump further when in distress. Financial boom from patents, if determined strategically safe to share, could provide additional funding for all departments. And finally, conservation of fuel and less dependency of mining additional reserves would benefit all mankind, not just the AUC. Okay, so from Natara here. Uh, I warned the department that cuts would be coming with Commander Wood's dismissal. And after conferring with MAST, I'm recommending we suspend this project effective immediately. Your research into xenoneural networks is interesting, Dr. Ames, but in order for me to justify funding anything that involves alien organisms, we need to be able to pitch some kind of military application to the higher-ups. To have it appear as if we are violating the Treaty of Norian without uh, producing any actual weapons would be a foolish endeavor. However, my main concern is the budget. Along with the comm spike, this was one of Commander Wood's pet projects, and it seemed to have a heavy influence in several areas that I believe are outside his purview. I'm not making an accusation, I understand he had junior engineers serve as his liaison for much of this, and that is being investigated by my team. Let me be clear when I say I'm not singling you out. More casualties should be expected, and I will send a message out to the entire team soon. 
that is back to Archangel from Sandra Ram. Hey, I'm sorry to hear about the suspension of Project X and N. It was bold and ambitious, as all your work is. But since you're now free, I was wondering if you might consider bringing that big, bold way of thinking to our project instead. Another team has been trying to design a ship that will take full advantage of our pilot's flying prowess, and with the recent accidents, we could all use a pick-me-up. That's why I've drawn up this supplementary proposal to alter the engine and the fuel of the latest prototype. Historically, we've sought lighter elements. Hydrogen is a property of uh, hydrogen as a property is 57 times lighter than gaseous vapors and 40 times lighter than air. It's odorless, non-corrosive. Liquid hydrogen combined with oxidizers was basically the go-to fuel in old school space exploration. And yeah, more modern engines have done the opposite, going with the weightier gravitational warping to bend space-time, so we made the switch from hydrogen fuel to helium, which is also way less flammable and requires less inventing. It's the preferred choice in powering grav drives. Now, I've always been a contrarian, mom always said so, anyway, so maybe this is all just foolish speculation. But I wonder if a shift back to hydrogen-based fuel may be worth exploring. Given the crystallization process on other planets can enrich chemical properties in different ways, and reduce hydrogen's more volatile tendencies, maybe we need to explore the possibilities of a hydrogen-based grav drive. I don't know, just a thought, but one that's been rattling around my brain for a hot minute now. So after I dot my I's and cross my T's, I'm thinking of pitching the idea to Dr. Vogel next week, but I would love to hear your feedback on the idea first. And then we have some budget cuts. I think that this is uh, indeed the same as before, but I couldn't help but notice another computer. So that would be Ames computer, I suppose. So here we go, come spike. Interesting, finally. So mission intelligence is one of the key fa Is this the same as we had before, though? I don't remember, so we're going to read it. Mission intelligence is one of the key factors in tilting the scales of war. One can go as far back as uh, the 20th century when Alan Turing invented a bomb machine to decrypt the Enigma code the Nazis used to transmit uh, transmit messages. It can be argued that having advanced knowledge of enemy tactics, plans, and intentions is of a far greater value than superior firepower or numbers. Historically, this has proven so, and thus it is the opinion of Dr. Vogel and his team that the development of Project UCE86 should be prioritized over projects designed to provide a brute force solution to potential war. The applications are, whether it's quantum encrypted messaging or other forms of data masking, the Comspike aims to be a casual listening device capable of intercepting and decrypting enemy transmission. Now we have some civilian applications. So likely this technology would be shared with the general public unless a tactical weakness were found in the technology. If such a thing were to occur, the comspike could be sold to civilian salvage teams. Their crew could use the device to intercept cold signals on planets with high data encryption signatures or hail other ships in areas where data disruption is high. And then we have phase one. And it is indeed now underway. The scientists are unsure where the idea originally sprang from, as Dr. Vogel is notoriously private, but the concept itself is genius. Having the technology be mobile is a particularly interesting quirk. I relayed the details of the proposal to the admirals at MAST. We've secured the necessary funding and will begin construction immediately. Engineers have been uh, given blueprints, but as far as they know, this is simply a standard prototype construction for use in space warfare. Uh, the actual details of what is on board will come after the initial phase. And now we have phase two. So while phase one is not yet complete, the common spike is now being developed by the scientists in tandem with the engineers. The two teams will eventually need to be merged, but for now, Dr. Vogel thinks it's best to keep the two teams separated. He feels a friendly rivalry will lead to a more competitive spirit. Some of the, some of the engineers and scientists have, been placed, uh, have even placed bets on which project will be finished first, not realizing both are part of Project UCE86. Okay, nothing that uh, really helps me, I don't think, but interesting to read. We have a safe, I'm not going to care about that, sign up self and toxin, sure, why not? And we have access to a vent here. Well, isn't that just grand? So that kind of makes me feel like we're going to be getting close to where we need to be. Which is, is that by any chance Dr. Vogel? Well, I don't know. Locate the comms pack, it says. <laughs> okay, I can't actually scan the the person. Yes, so we have. I just open this slightly from the side. 
We have UC Marine Leatherneck, which is a fantastic name. Do you move? Is my question. Also, you know what? Why don't we make use of one of my new powers here? Which is Sense Star Stuff. So we use this one. Now we get to see people. So you're obviously over there, and that's fine. It doesn't seem like you are moving. You haven't moved so far at the very least. So if I just. Okay, they might not actually mind <laughs> at all. <laughs> they might feel that it's fine that I'm here. If uh, that's the case. Oh, no, I don't think we need to do that. If that's the case, go back to personal atmosphere. Hello. <gasps> There's two of you. Intercepting Bogle. transponder data in the Hoffa system might be promising. Hello. According to autocorrelation models, results in risk increased by a magnitude of uh, two. But we won't tell Commander Natar. Wait, who are you? Why are you in here? Did you not see the sign? Well, sign? What sign are you talking about? No, 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 maybe don't say that. So, yeah, would you be the person who is in charge of a Project UCE-86? Oh, yes. I've been studying decryption of all types for quite a long time. Probably since before you took your first crab jump. Signal protocol, quantum ratchet symmetry, interleaving data extrapolation. You name it, I've lectured on it. I've probably forgotten half of it, but I definitely knew it once. I mean, that's fine. <laughs> good good for you, I suppose. So, okay. Doing work on the comms pack, need access to the device. And with the engineering team, need you to hand over the comms pack. Maybe don't uh, say that, just hand it over. But I am doing work. Could I potentially have access to it? Don't you mean access to the ship? Because the comm spike isn't a device, it's a module. It's attached to a prototype in one of our docking ports. We're still in the testing phase, running decryptions across a variety of signal types. But the results so far have been very promising. It can even interpolate signal data lost in the retrieval. It really is a wondrous technology. That all sounds very fun. So it's a ship module, you say? Well, yes. In the same way the Almagest is a book on constellations and a supernova is an explosion in space. The greatest scientific minds the UC has to offer did not congregate to this station to build just a module. The brightest engineers in the settled systems did not get transferred to this station to build just a module. Well, she, she, she allowed, dude. Okay, so how about you repeat that to me in English? Don't say that. So decryption on that level has vast military applications. No wonder the UC is interested in it. Let's go with that. Yes, it's not quite cracking the Enigma code, but it will give us a significant tactical advantage. We'll be able to infer everything from battle plans to meal consumption. Not that we'd care about that sort of thing, uh, outside of the effects of diet on combat readiness. And yes, there are certain kinks to be worked out, missing parts in the occasional traumatic injury here and there, but it's all part of the adventure. Yes, what's, uh, what's research and development without a bit of traumatic injury? Cool. So ship is perfect. I can kill two birds with one stone. Maybe don't say that to him. So I'd be a, I'd be a good pilot. I'd have adventure. Yeah. Hey, I could be a pilot. You're lacking pilots, aren't you? Yes. It's not the destination, but the journey that matters. <laughs> Particularly when the destination is death. But don't worry. We've corrected the problem with the ship's life support systems, and statistical models show a failure rate of less than 2%. In short, I've requested a full squadron of these brave and fearless marines to be transferred to the station. They'll give the prototype a final run, and provided there are minimal casualties, we can present our findings to mast. So does that mean that I have to get a marine outfit and I can betray one? There's no time. The captain of the Jade Swan is trying to steal the comm spike. I need to secure the prototype ship immediately. Maybe don't do that. But here we go. Let's do a bit of persuasion because I'm bloody good at that now. I am just happen to be those one of those pilots. Lovely. Splendid. 
That was fast. I thought I put in the request this morning. Normally my requests aren't given this much attention, let alone haste. It seems a tad suspicious. It could also be that it just happened to fly by here, and we just picked it up. But yeah, there we go, reasons are classified, but I've been asked personally to fly the ship. I see. It would have been nice if they kept me in the loop. I am the project lead, after all. Well, sometimes we don't really get what we want, do we? So, yep, command resources and my documents are in order. We don't have time for this, I've been told it. No, don't say there was an emergency, because it isn't. Somebody really high up called in a favor. No, no, the commander has said that the documents are in order. Commander Natara, you say? Oh, well, we don't want to make her angry. She's terrifying. All right, you've convinced me. You're the new task pilot. You'll need a uniform and a terminal password to authorize a flight and get past Natara's cumbersome checkpoints. The uniform you can get in the locker room area, the password you get from me. You'll find the prototype ship at docking bay 8. Use the password to access the flight terminals in the control center. And of course, best of luck. You are doing science a great service by undertaking this sacrifice. I mean, you're, you you seem to think that it is certain I will die, <laughs> which I'm not super keen on, not gonna lie, but okay. Now, there was a whole bunch of stuff that I can apparently do. Let's, uh, what is it that I can do? So, optional, I'll find a route to bypass checkpoint. It doesn't feel like I need to because I have a password and I can get a uniform, which is what we're going to be doing, but then basically just escape on the ship. Hold on, am I not? There we go, thank you. So, a suit, you see, or a thing. Can go through there, but... At this point, do I need to? Alright, well, I will. So apparently... Yeah, right. <laughs> yep, yep, okay, okay, fair, fair enough. Do we have it one here? Oh, yes, very much indeed. Uh, equip. Thank you. Don't stealth. Lovely. We're all friends. You are a test pilot. Ooh, I kind of want to chat to you. <laughs> I kind of want to chat to you. You're also a test pilot. Hello. Doctor, we've been asked to tighten security on the station. Orders are orders. I don't see why a test pilot would do that, though. So am I looking like you? No. Hold on. Wait. Did I not actually... I th did I not uh, click it enough? Hold on. Oh, wait, no. Ah, show spacesuit in settlements is because I don't actually have the spacesuit shown then. Is that, is that why? I think that might be why, because this is uh, apparently not an actual spacesuit. Okay, never mind then. I think we... well, you know what? Just to make sure that we're not in a problem here. Am I now looking like a pilot? Yes, I am. I like that it's the same... <laughs> The same look as uh, uh, the one that I already had, or had. So anyway, cool, we have that. Any stuff I can do otherwise? I should be able to just walk past stuff now, right? People should not bother me. So... Am I allowed in here then? Is that... Have I got the key for this? No. Unlocks somewhere else. Exactly where am I allowed? So that's just you. Research lab. Ammo doesn't come up as stealing, but that's fine. So, question is, do I... Okay, you seem to think that I go through here. Okay, you seem to think that I go through here. Okay, fine. I didn't really think that I would need this. But apparently we're doing the sneaky way to do this. Okay. Oh. Yeah, that was apparently enough to be past the checkpoints. Lovely. So do we check through a bit here, I suppose? Anything... Anything fun? We have a few cred sticks. We'll grab a bit of money. Okay. I think we can just walk through here. Yep. 
Would this be it then? Maybe. Uh, docking Bay 8, they said, but this is actually absolutely not it. We are going through here. Yes, indeed. Deep recon spacesuit, not what we're supposed to have. That's 9, 8 is over here. Do we get into trouble with you? Well, we're gonna jam a card in here. Approved. I can go through, and there we go. Easy! Let's get on the prototype ship. Alright, we are on the ship. Do we need to go down? I don't think so. Does it look like it? This is presumably not gonna be, like, the biggest kind of ship. The whole ship is the comm spike, so to speak, or it's in an integral part of the comm spike. So do we just... Uh... Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, there, there are some ships here. That's true. All right, then. Well, do we have any... Do we have a cargo here? And can I loot the cargo? Here we go. Oh, dec oh they've added a decorate uh, button, so to speak. Lovely. No, no cargo hold. I mean, you can just do uh, this to get into decoration. Not here, apparently. <laughs> Not here, apparently. But, yes, you can also press this button. Not right now. Not in this ship, but still. Because it's not actually my ship, you know. All right, then. Let's get into the seat. Prototype ship, you are not cleared for takeoff. What's going on over there? Oh, I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> and I can't talk to anyone. <laughs> let's just unlock and see what happens. All ships, secure the prototype. That's all fine. We are gonna say... Oh, do I have Engine anything tango. set up? No, we don't, but that's fine. We are gonna set up an escape. <laughs> we need to go over to... Can I go there immediately? Yes, I can. So, let's uh, click the key. Click the key. There we go. Initiate jump. I just have something uh, you might be interested in. Oh, I have it. I have it. Oh, who's talking? <laughs> Somehow, my crew is on this ship. How is that even possible? <laughs> How is that even possible? I have no idea. But we made it to the key. Uh, we are safe and sound. Lovely. So Sarah said something about having something I possibly was interested in. Well, that's interesting. Maybe we'll go and talk to her then. But alright then, let's uh, dock with the key. See what Neva says about this. All right, we are back. Well, and, well, uh, well. Hello. welcome back, Rook. Looks like you got a new toy for me. Go on in and give everyone the lowdown. We'll take care of things from here. That's a real nice ship you brought in. I can't wait to tinker with it. Well, lovely to have been of service, I suppose. We'll All right, then. Neva apparently not it. here, so we have to go in and find her. The Let's fleet do is that. And she's apparently in the Nova, just uh, chilling by the bar. No, it's not. Yeah, no, no, no. It's Juan we're supposed to talk to for some reason, not Neva. Was I not supposed to talk to Neva? Okay, never mind. Juan, yes, yeah, she did mention going to the Nova, that's true. Nice to know Neva was right about you. It's good to have a promising rookie with the fleet. I mean, I really shouldn't be a rookie anymore. So, alright, you're saying that Neva vouched for me. Well, isn't that lovely? Surprise? Neva talks tough, and frankly, she is tough, but she's not a machine. All right, cool. So you weren't much help. No, no, no. She she got us on the bloody station. So, okay, couldn't have done it without you, though. I won't deny I helped. Let's hope the compensation reflects that, huh? Anyway, I believe I owe you a drink. It's the last time I'm paying, of course. Because if Dalgado's right about Crix's legacy. You've earned more than your fair share already with that comm spike. Well, we shall see about that. Haven't seen any credits so far. So, okay. So Delgado apparently talked about the comm spike with you then. Yeah, and I had to feign my surprise to make sure I didn't rat you out. But thanks for trusting me with that info all the same. Us rooks have to stick together. Uh -huh. Oh, you're also a rook then. Man, do they not uh, promote much. Lovely. So nobody waste my time, legacy better be real. Yes, the legacy is as good as ours. We don't have to be uh, cool cool with her, so to speak. Sounds like you're on board as a true believer. I have to admit, the way things are going, I'm starting to believe myself. Anyway, I've kept you long enough. Now that you've had your drink and my debt is paid, it's time for you to give Delgado the good news. 
Aha, uh -huh, so we don't even talk to neighbor then. Lovely. Also, there is a my friend here. Open for well, why they would so have that good. there. But right then, uh, leave this place. Go and find job, the Delgado then. All right, we have found him, and apparently I am over encumbered. Didn't even notice that I was. All right then, Delgado. Let's have a chat, you and I. Jasmine tells me that you not only brought us the comp spike, but an entire prototype UC ship. I'm impressed, Rook. Very impressed. So impressed that you might give me a raise, if you know what I mean? Where's my ship? That's a good question. Don't worry your pretty little head about your damn ship. We had it brought back here safe and sound. Now pay attention. Dale went out of his way to tell you how impressed he was. You just gonna leave him hanging like that? Uh-huh, sure. Thank you about that, for that. So, okay, spare parts. No, 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 go, don't go there. Comspike was built into the ship, so they didn't really have a choice. Should have taken the compliment, Rook. Dale doesn't give those out often. Juan gave us the full rundown of your little smash-and-grab operation. She gave you some really high praise. Said you were a pro. And from what I hear, receiving praise from Juan Dayu is quite an accomplishment. All in all, a job well done. Now, on to the business at hand. Jasmine, are you there? Yep, I'm here, boss. What's up? How's it going? I already have two of my crew tearing the ship apart from one end to the other. Com spike shouldn't be too tough to extract. I'm looking forward to seeing what those UC techs have been up to. Keep me posted. All right, that leaves our electromagnetic atmosphere problem. And I think we've discovered a solution. There's a corporation in the city of Neon called Jennerdyne. They're responsible for the massive conduction grid that powers the city. We get our hands on their electrical absorption tech, and Jasmine swears she can tame it to handle Bannock 4. Okay, interesting, going back to Neon. So, okay... But, are we just going on a guess here? Because I'm gonna be uh, having issues if uh, something happens, you know? It's all we got. Now you are part of this job, so deal with it. Besides, I've learned never to question Jasmine's talent. I mean, okay, fair enough. The conduction grid, what's up? What was that? It's the giant shroud that covers the entire city. Big, ugly thing that Jennerdyne uses to absorb lightning strikes. When you arrive in Neon, I'm sure your contact will fill you in with all the boring details. All right, fair enough. So, okay, word that everything's engine on jazz can it detect to work. That's true. I feel in jazz. I notice it will, so that should help. But yeah, we are banking a lot on jazz here. I mean, yes, you just uh, now said that you have learned to trust her, but still. Hey, my girl can piece together a jump engine with her eyes shut. Literally, I've seen her do it, so cut the crap. The only thing you need to worry about is bringing the tech home. All right, all right. Infighting isn't going to get us to the legacy any faster, Neva. Now, why don't you give us the info on our Neon contact? You get to meet up with the lovely Estelle Vincent. She's had her deft little fingers on the pulse of Neon for some time now. Whatever info you need, I guarantee she can get. Estelle is one of the most reliable captains we have in the fleet. If I want something done, there's none of the typical bullshit. It gets done, and afterward we all split the cash. All right, interesting. So I trust you aren't implying anything with that comment, no. I like the part about splitting the cash, and so sure we'll get along just fine, yes. No, no, no. There is no getting along here. You are going to do everything she asks. Follow her instructions to the letter. She is valuable to the fleet. You piss her off and we lose her as a contact, you're going to be answering to me. Estelle will be waiting at Madame Savage's place. I'd say don't keep her waiting. But chances are she won't mind. Girl loves her liquor. And keep your eyes on the price. Neon's one big distraction for people like us. So I want you focused. We are one step away from Quix's legacy, and we cannot afford any screw-ups. Well, it's good that you put your trust in me, because I'm gonna be able to get it done. 
Comspike module now available on ship. So I don't even know what it is yet, <laughs> like what it does. But all right, then. I think that this is a good place to put a cut in. I thought that we would actually be going for the legacy. But obviously, yes, we have that second thing to think about. So it's back to Neon. Do I have anything else in Neon? I don't necessarily think so. Oh, design, special sauce. That's just S and then N. Yeah, we do have this one. Ah, well, we can't do that while we're there. That's true. We can do both the Crimson Fleet thing as well as the Epsite Strikers. It's been a while since we, we talked to them as well. They have been waiting for me to hack some signs for quite a long time now. So maybe we should get back to that. You know what? I'm going to put that as, a, uh, as the active uh, mission now because yes we're gonna do that also 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 get back to my mantis spacesuit please i realize now that the helmet was obviously the same because this was only this was only the suit not a helmet did i get ah <laughs> ah i did get more stuff and I didn't actually put it on, but nobody, nobody seemed to have cared anyway. <laughs> oh well. So yes, back to Neon, do a bit of work there, and then it's back here for presumably the final steps of the Crimson Fleet mission. That is gonna... well, that's not gonna come in the next episode, I don't think. I think we're gonna be in Neon in the next episode, but uh, after that... So we are gonna get to that quite shortly anyway, I think. For now though, this has been Ghostmoth Gaming with me, Christopher. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.